Hello. Uh, Hello. My name is Taylor Mack. This is Gelsey Bell. Um, Hello. And uh, Gelsey is a harp artist at the Hear Arts Center. And I've been doing a series of interviews with the harp artists, ask them about their projects, about their art, and their philosophy of life. And uh, if you don't know about harp, it's a program at, um, where the Hear Arts Center uh, has resident artists and they get to work on a piece for a number of years, whatever works for the artist. It could be a year or it could be four years, five years, whatever, you know, depending on the project and how big it is and what it needs and the process and what happens in the world and all of those things. Uh, and sometimes they produce it completely. Sometimes they co-produce. Sometimes they um, uh, they do all, a bunch of different uh, combinations of, of all of that. And also the harp artists have uh, breakout sessions and uh, workshops for a number of years uh, where they can talk to other artists and figure out how, how do you write a grant? How do you do this? How do you do that? How do you make the budget? So you kind of learn how to be a self-producer. Um, and sometimes, and it's different people, people who have been producing for years on their own and don't need that kind of um, help, like are there to help other people. And, uh, and then, um, and people that are just starting out, you know, so it, it's, it's a real a combination of a lot of different kinds of artists, um, all really kind of wonderful. There's an emphasis on hybrid, um, uh, whatever that means to you. Um, and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and Gelsey is here. She's a, a composer, a performer, an actor. A, 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 I mean, you describe yourself. Describe yourself. <laughs> Those are all uh, adjectives that I use. Um, yeah. Uh, I guess they're actually nouns. Um, yeah, I mean that, and I'm a scholar. I guess sometimes you can throw in sound artist. Yeah. Improviser, <laughs> but yeah. Those are the things. And when you say you're a scholar too, what what do you mean specifically? Like you're just a scholar of life, or specifically you're. A... Um, I have a PhD in performance studies, and I edit for two yeah. academic journals, and I teach and I um, publish articles sometimes about art. Yeah, and yeah. we met during the during the I think the very first workshop. Of, it was the um, first comet, the great yeah. comet of eighteen twelve. Uh, Natasha and Pierre, that uh, Dave Malloy's piece at, at Ars Nova, and um, you were wonderful in the workshop. <laughs> and I went on and did other things, and you stuck with it. So before we launch into the other things, I did want to ask you, just because I haven't seen you since then, really. Right. You know, <laughs> <laughs> what was that experience like to go from workshop to the Ars Nova production which you were wonderful in and then the off, I think you did the off-Broadway production too right I did and then yeah. the Broadway production which and, you were yep. also wonderful in uh so what yeah. was that like I mean it's wild it's yeah it's, it's like a it's, decade of your life right totally yeah it's yeah. really wild to be with a piece for that long um yeah two workshops um and just like off off Broadway off Broadway in Boston uh, and then on Broadway yeah. I mean, and yeah, you you really see like you learn about the different venue forms, the different sizes uh -huh. by seeing how a show keeps getting translated and what stays and what doesn't. And uh -huh. yeah, it was quite yeah. an education. Did it change your um your understanding of your own work or what you want to or how you want to work? Um um doing the experimental you know off 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 broadway version all the way to the broadway version and doing eight shows a week as opposed to you know in, ex in more experimental work we tend to get at the most 16 shows you know yeah. <laughs> like, so, oh, totally. like, so what is that like to, yeah to for sure i mean i guess i um I mean, I'm sure you have opinions about this too. I definitely feel like Broadway <laughs> has its um, its perks and its limits. Uh -huh. yeah, um, yeah, just in terms of like what it can what it can give you and what it encourages of an artist. Um, uh -huh. So it's not something that I feel is calling to me <laughs> at this point in my career. But um, exciting to have had the experience. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, and I yeah, wouldn't yeah. have known that otherwise. And I certainly yeah. learned. A, I mean, I grew a lot as a performer because uh -huh. you just perform eight times a week for a year. And you yeah. just it's just a whole never level of how to get through just performing day after day. So, yeah, yeah I mean, I learned a huge amount in in terms of being a performer um and in terms of being a writer i feel like i just um it confirmed for me my love for people who support new things the making of new things of intimate small spaces 
Um, yeah. 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 And I wanted to ask you kind of about that. Uh, how, to what degree is the, is the exploration, the art for you? Oh <laughs> yeah. Does, does that A make sense? That question? Yeah, <laughs> yeah totally. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not someone, I, um, I'm not someone who feels like once you premiere the piece, it's over. I'm uh -huh. definitely more of the the creed of write some music, tour it everywhere, learn about it as you keep performing it over and over again, and eventually you learn what it is. And uh -huh. so that process of learning what it is, which requires being in front of an audience doing that a lot, uh -huh. um, is a huge part of the process for me. Um, and most of my work just does it like, you know, I've never had a multi-month run of something I've written. So, um, <laughs> right. you know, yeah. so I haven't gotten to the point where I'm not still like developing and learning in performance for the, you know, for the most part. Yeah. So, and is that, is that not necessarily the commercial, um, model, but is that thing where you take a piece of yours on the road and you tour it and you do two nights in every city in the world, you know, is that appealing as a way to grow that? Or are you more interested oh, in, um, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's appealing. I haven't really done that too much. Um, mm -hmm. the way like a rock band does. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, with the way my career has ended up, it's more often like, you know, do it at a festival in Paris and then a month later, do it at, at the small thing in New York and right. then a week later, do it at another place in New York, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Or, yeah, as opposed to just that be be in a van and go across the country for two months. Um, right. But I think that <laughs> could be fun. Yeah. I feel <laughs> like I maybe should have done that in my 20s. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, well, we all kind of felt like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, so I want to so talk to me about your new piece that you're doing it here because I, I want to get into that. Yeah. yeah. Totally. Okay. So the piece I'm making um, is called Morning, and uh -huh. it um, starts basically with the thought experiment of what would happen to planet Earth if there were no humans all of a sudden. Um, and it's very much, I mean, it's in that way, it's very much like a sci-fi opera. It's like speculative on every level uh, of the word. Totally. Um, and, um, it's, you know, we start with, okay, in the first few minutes, the dogs really have to go to the bathroom and they can't go outside and there's no owner to like let them out. And then, um, slowly following the, you know, the subway floods and, um, what happens to our power plants and and the way time functions in the piece is it just um, moves through time exponentially so mm -hmm. it's like uh, the first 20 minutes will be with the first 200 years and then flip forward to 5,000 years into the future and then 100,000 years into the future and go all the way to m multiple billions of years into the future um, and are you hopping around from environment to environment within that, or is mm. it uh, um, is it one place that you're seeing go through all those changes? Yeah, the I mean, the way I'm thinking of it is that the performers are these kind of unexplained witnesses that maybe uh -huh. are aliens or gods or something, and it's just uh -huh. like they're looking down on Earth, and uh -huh. so they're kind of pinpointing all over the place. And there are moments where the story gets um, into space travel and then talking about the moon. Um, but for the most part, it's, um, I mean, obviously there's like so many <laughs> examples of what would happen. It's a huge amount of time. The earth is uh -huh. huge. So it's like pinpointing, okay, in that city, in that place, like, okay, a little moment here in New York and now a little moment in Northern Australia. And, uh -huh. just... and is, is it, um, is there, uh, are, are, as easy as I can ask it, are there lyrics or is it soundscape? Is it from, is there language? Yeah, um, yeah. Language is definitely yeah. a big part of it. Yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, it's very much influenced by my love of songwriting. So there's definitely uh -huh. songs. And yeah. um, my work with composer Bob Ashley, so that there's this musical storytelling. Um, and uh -huh. so some parts are pretty talky, and some parts uh -huh. will kind of 
lose themselves in more instrumental noisy stuff yeah. And I immediately, so if there are no people, the talky parts, is it, who's, who's talking? <laughs> That's what I want to know. Totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so well, like, it's more <laughs> storytelling than character. Maybe uh, it's the way to say yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that's part of why, like, um, the experimental form and kind of the hybridity that um, here is such a great supporter of. Yeah. Is, you know, at home in here. Yeah, and how do you how do you describe experimental? Like, how would you define it for yourself or or yeah. for things that you see? I mean, because I because sometimes I think people just think anything that's not like a one four five well, is experimental. People, it, like, yeah, totally. I mean, the term can like, definitely be used that way. I think. I mean, for me, the term comes out of a very particular historical lineage, especially. In uh -huh. the state. Um, yeah. So there's, you know, certain artists that I think of as like I'm inheriting techniques and things they were doing, uh -huh. whether that's Robert Ashley or Meredith Monk or, uh -huh. um, you know, plenty of um, plenty of other musicians. Uh, I mean, certainly there's a lot of overlap with what is called creative music which uh -huh. um, is maybe <laughs> such a weird circles. word creative totally. music but basically like, it's just music like isn't creative <laughs> yeah right totally yeah yeah new music creative music i mean they're all imperfect terms there's yeah, no yeah. question about that um, yeah. but there's more than one four or five sometimes you're not even paying attention to harmony right um, right you know yeah. there's no chord progression at all um, uh-huh but a, I mean, so, a lot of my music also is using folk forms, like uh -huh, right. in terms of the songwriting. So I'm really like. Yeah, I saw that in the prisoner piece that you oh, made. Yeah. What's it called? Prisoner. Prisoner song. Prisoner song. Yeah. So you're using these folk songs, but then you're, but you're also giving kind of, um, I don't know. I guess the 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 experimental part for me in watching it is. Um, Oh, it's the sounds of their emotions, or the sounds of their um, environment, or the sounds of the, not just the folk song. The folk song yeah, is yeah. kind of part of the landscape, but it's not the whole story. And so that that again, as we said, hybrid. You know, you're squishing it together. But um, yeah, totally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, but but I have a question about patience and also okay. cultivation. So so when you're do you feel like you have to find your audience or are you cultivating an audience for the work hmm interesting um do you know what i mean by that because if it just if anyone random comes to your work they go oh this is experimental and they don't necessarily have context for it or mm -hmm. like they don't even know who meredith monk is you know totally. uh but um so there but there are obviously people who do know who meredith monk is so are you trying to find those people or are you trying to um, find just the regular person and then uh, I, bring them into the world that you make? Or is it, yeah, a combination? Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I think, I think it's a combination, but I also am not disappointed with myself if it's not, you know, if like tourists that might otherwise go to Kinky Boots don't come right. to my show. You know what I mean? Right, 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 um, right. I mean, I do think using a term like experimental is also just indicating like, hey, there might be sounds you're not used to. And that's cool, right. you know? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You don't show up if you're not ready for it. <laughs> right. Yeah, or at least if it's yeah. happening, they have some way to explain it to themselves. <laughs> right, right, right. right. Um, but right. I, I mean, I definitely learned um i mean one of the really beautiful things about working with dave malloy and doing comet or ghost quartet has been um just meeting a much bigger audience than i was um with other musical projects uh -huh. um, and so many i mean uh, musical theater obviously there's a lot of uh teenage fans that get really excited about shows and there were so many people that I met who were really listening to certain kinds of sounds they'd never considered before and getting really excited uh -huh. about that. And right. that moment um, and, you know, talking to people about that after the show is always really wonderful. So um, mm. I definitely 
want to support those kinds of moments, you know? Yeah. And then you always, I mean, that my experience of, of being on the road is that if you end up, uh, I got booked at the studio theater, the Sydney Opera House um, a couple of times and, and it's just a 400 seat theater with it, but because it's right there and it's such a tourist thing, people want to come see the Sydney mm -hmm. Opera House. So they mm -hmm. book, they, people from the cruise ships will come and see the, the any any ticket that they can get right, right, <laughs> like at totally. the opera house. so like your whole audience of people who have no desire to see what you're doing just wanted to be at thoughts in the opera house <laughs> so it's really it's a real challenge to, to to invite them in to the piece right and figure totally. out how to do that yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure <laughs> but I guess that was it was kind of my question about patience is like um how much do you think about that when starting a piece that you're you're you, you're you're going to take your time and let people come to it when they get to it or are you trying to get them uh what's the invitation I guess is what I'm yeah asking. totally I mean I do think that there's a lot of kinds of music that I enjoy that are not you know top 40 on the radio mm -hmm. and um so yeah I'm there's definitely an element of like this is the music I'm making and mm -hmm. you know find you know you'll find your way into it or you won't and i'm not mm -hmm. going to compromise that um that must be so liberating <laughs> does it feel yeah, that way i mean totally i mean i'm an artist yeah. right yeah like, yeah yeah part yeah. of why i decide to be an artist and make the sacrifices that come with that are so i can just do whatever the hell i want to do yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the way yeah. I think about it. At least. <laughs> Gorgeous. So, so then, is there intention before you start a piece? Like, so this this work about um, humans not existing and nature taking over again. I I imagine there's some kind of desire to um, at least explore themes and ideas of climate change within that, uh, mm -hmm. but maybe not. And so I I wonder, you know, do you do you start with an intention, or you just start making and you go, you know what, I feel like this is doing this, or you, it, I know it was a little inspired by a book you wrote you read so was it you read that book and you thought I want to make a piece about this or, yeah, you know, yeah yeah so I read this book um that came out about 15 years ago um called The World Without Us um by Alan Weissman um and he's like a science journalist so he starts with this you know the idea okay humans are gone we don't know why or care why they're gone they're gone what happens um and certainly um a lot of there's that was an amazing starting point and Part of what really surprised me reading the book was how hopeful and calm it made me feel. I was really getting ready for some, you know, dystopian um, kind of like angst. And instead, I came out of it feeling so much more peaceful and hmm. um, yeah, and, and that emotional experience of reading that book which was so unexpected to me um made me think about what opera is capable of doing um yeah. and the layering of um like hopeful and distraught that you can feel at one moment because of just something music is able to do um and i also feel like one of the things that opera is really great with um, and really, I mean, opera, I mean, like musical storytelling um, mm -hmm. is stretching time. So like, mm -hmm. you know, spending a single second over five minutes mm -hmm. or spending, you know, a hundred years over 30 seconds. Um, and so I felt like part of this story is about feeling geological time. It's about feeling time scales that we just don't feel in our day-to-day -day lives, which I think is really useful for making sense of how to interact with nature as humans, um, yeah. how to make the choices we're making. Um, and also and, just how to slow down and take a breath. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Yeah, for sure. Especially for the New Yorkers. Um, right, right, right. So I, um, so yeah, so I guess, I mean, I'm always writing music and I'm always thinking in these forms because this is my career. This is what I do. Um, and so I just um, reading this book, it just um, really inspired me to put it into that form. Um, 
And I also just, I mean, I love science fiction. I love science. I'm just mm -hmm. like, love reading pop science books. And <laughs> I love researching. This is part of why I'm a scholar. Um, so that side of this project has just been so much fun. Okay. Like, great. I get to read three books about nuclear waste and make of sense. What's going to happen? <laughs> yeah. What's the deal with that? <laughs> right. What can I make sense of? Right. And so, uh, so you did this walk recently uh, 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 through the cemetery. What's the cemetery called? In, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I, I made a sound uh, yeah. walk called Cairns um, for uh -huh. Greenwood Cemetery in Brooklyn. Greenwood. Yeah. And so, when you're making a sound walk, obviously you went to the cemetery and you walked around. And I'm, I mean, I say obviously, but I'm assuming you would yeah, do that. It would, it's not, true. It would just all come out of your brain, <laughs> right? And uh, and you're kind of wondering how. I guess the question really is, like, how much does the site-specific space influence the the um, the composition? And then um, and then how do you bring that site-specific uh sound into a theater like what what are your techniques that you're using to to do that because this piece is so much about nature this new piece but you're going to be yeah, doing morning. it inside right it, totally um, yeah yeah so, yeah for sure yeah. yeah i mean that's that kind of, i mean that kind of thing is has been really important for me for years you know i have mm -hmm. um a song cycle i made for bathrooms called bathroom songs that i only perform bathrooms I, right and you did yeah. the skylight piece too in that room with uh i just watched the video but <laughs> in the room where it's just so the acoustics is so incredible. totally totally <laughs> so, yeah, yeah yeah so that i have this other piece um skylight that was made for big resonant spaces and we made this video in a silo um, and I am off, I, you know, I have a piece for a corner where I'm really using the acoustics of the space. And I love making these pieces that, um, you know, every bathroom is going to be different. Every corner is going to be different. And part of the piece is reacting to that. So that's mm -hmm. something I'm already, you know, have been thinking on in many levels for years. And so making the sound walk and basically marrying what I knew the the audience listeners experience would be of space with the music um, was really fun you know there's like a section where you go upstairs and you get out most people <laughs> get out of breath and the music has a lot of breath in it and oh, so it's it's aware of what kind of physical experience the listener is going to go through while they're listening um yes. Or, you know, there's field recordings throughout that we recorded in Greenwood. And there's a song towards the end where I basically wrote the melody and the harmonies around the field recording, meaning around the sounds of birds and machines and airplanes, always reacting to that. Um, uh -huh. So I think for morning, um, I, I mean, I'm hoping to use a, a number of techniques with how I bring the sound of landscape in, in there. Right, because if you don't have the plane flying by, then totally. you bring that sound of the plane into the space so that you can respond to it, I guess. Yeah. yeah, 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 for sure. And in some cases that will be true. It's also something that I've been really interested in is materiality. So maybe soon I should play this song for you. Yeah, why don't you finish of, what you're saying and then, and, then, and then let's go into the song. The part of the thing with this song is I play this instrument called the daxophone, which is right mm -hmm. here, um, uh, an experimental instrument. It was um, invented in the 80s. It's not super well known, but it's all about wood. So right here huh. is this piece of wood and um, I have, you know, like 16 different ones of these tongues, we call them. Um, and every piece of wood is, um, makes different sounds. Um, the, the materiality of the wood itself makes a different sound. So, um, you know, I have a section of the piece I've been working on where I'm thinking about really old trees and, and experiencing time in the in the time scale of instead of living for say a hundred years like a human might living for three thousand years like a coastal redwood is and for that music I'm actually playing coastal redwood um, because I have a tongue made right. of that material um, 
So, so that's kind of where I'm starting with. Yeah. 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 Um, if, if it's, if, um, there's a section about water, I'm using, I have a bowl and using water as a musical instrument. So Uh not, it's, to me, it's, there's the part of it of like, okay, let's represent what is being talked about in the story. But then there's kind of that next level of using that material as the instrumentation itself. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Let's hear a song. Can I play this song? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Um, I have to scoop back so that you can see the daxophone at least a little bit. Part of what's really fun about it is you have to like sit on this. It's really architectural in its way, which I really enjoy. <laughs> what uh, what should I say? Okay, so this it's is like a, a toy. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. This is a song from an earlier part of the piece um, that is dealing with kind of what happens to buildings, human buildings, um, in the first, say, like a hundred years um, after humans are gone. And um, this song is talking about um, how one of the things that will happen is that there will be a bunch of fires um, and that a lot of buildings that aren't destroyed by water and rain over many, many years um, will be taken away in in fires. So um, I'm also from Northern California. So fire is an extremely, uh, you know, intense part of my life and my family's life at this point um so Mm -hmm. anyway that's all yeah me too yeah all my all my friends are yeah you feeling (laughs) california (laughs) i'm feeling you yeah yeah yeah. um okay cool so here we go home burns as flights of fires rise out of lightning storm floors from forest to suburbs to cities eating Sap-filled conifers and plywood Block upon block Beastly rack mining hard With inexhaustible hunger
I can't wait. Thank you. Wow. I have so many questions now. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Um, Oh my gosh, I want to ask you so many things. Uh, But, um... (laughs) all right. So, language, uh, when you're working, do you feel the freedom of experimental on experimental? That's the that's the silly way I know how to ask the question. Like, can the la- the, the language uh, is poetic and yet clear? Your the lyric writing, Great. right? Thank While the you. sound is doing something that's like, you know what I mean? And um, and so I'm 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 wondering what your thoughts are in terms of. Um, uh, grounding while exploding. I guess does that make hmm. is that is that a real um, well, that can, clear that question? Can be, <laughs> that can, <laughs> on which on which level? On um, what I mean is like exploding, or I mean, like so the 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 melody is you know you're kind of like working within a, a certain I don't forgive me for not knowing the exact language but tonal structure, right? Yeah, yeah, totally. And um, yeah. And so, so that's a foundation. Yeah. Um, and the drone is a foundation, and uh, and then the lyric writing is um, really, be- really beautiful, and 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 the word like roller coaster comes in, which um, uh, everybody has a foundation for, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, a physical <laughs> so, foundation for. Yeah. So I yeah, guess what totally. I'm really asking is like, at what point? how are you balancing foundation with taking everybody away from foundation? Um, does that make is that It totally does. I don't know if I yeah. can answer that question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I might need I you to come to the answer. show and tell me. <laughs> right, right, right. Okay. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, I, I was just wondering if you think about that before you do it, or is it instinctual or is it just like you feeling your way through, you know, which is, so I do, I do. do think I work pretty instinctually. Um, mm-hmm. I definitely, I mean, I'm, I'm a poet and that's been, I mean, I've been writing poetry as long as I've been writing words, that's like, yeah, you know, that's yeah. totally in there. And I mean, part of what I love about contemporary philosophy is often it's poetry. Um, and, um, yeah. but that said, I also understand that science and, um, uh, you know, um, is, 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 is wrapped in concreteness. So it's like, I want to get into the poetry of deciduous trees, but I also want to make sure I know which ones are deciduous and which ones are conifers and what exactly that means and uh-huh. what physical processes is that dealing with. Does that make sense? Yeah, it totally makes sense. Yeah. And I, and I yeah. also, I mean, I love the musicality of language. So there's always the first level of, okay, here's the meaning I'm going for. And then here are some images that I like. But then uh-huh. I always rewrite my lyrics once I'm actually singing because right, of course. You know, I'm finding the music in them. Do you uh, rewrite them in the moment of performing or it's all done beforehand? Uh, I think for the most part, it's all done beforehand. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, 
improvisation is definitely an important part of my process and oftentimes part of how I'm writing a song is just by singing it over and over and over again uh-huh. and yeah. then trying yeah. a bunch That's of things and seeing what works. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. So yeah. fun. I mean, yeah. one of the things <laughs> the with musicians part. is like musicians like to play music. Like yeah. we just, yeah, 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 we do just want to hang out and play one song over and over. Uh, if you don't yeah. want to do that, you're just not going to be a musician. You're not going to be able to stand it. <laughs> I, oh, I kind of have a lame, a lame, um, logistical question for you which is uh which is um neighbors are, are you in new york city right now or are you in yeah i'm in you are. so so when you when you're rehearsing right and you're doing it over and over again and you're trying to find your way but you know i, I know when i'm in my apartment i can't let i can't let go i can't even let go when uh you know <laughs> my husband's anywhere in, in the vicinity right so I, I mean, like, so how do you how do you do it? Do you just go, oh, screw it. They'll just they'll deal with it. Because I just watched this documentary on Klaus Nomi and he used to rehearse oh. every single day. He had a courtyard and everyone who lived in the East Village around in that courtyard could hear him rehearse yes. all day. And I they know all just loved it. I know this documentary. Yes, yeah, totally. Oh, <laughs> and I just think it. about that. I'm like, I, I don't think my neighbors would be happy with me. If I <laughs> <laughs> totally. <laughs> yeah, did. yeah. I, um. <laughs> For many, many years, I had a one-bedroom apartment with no neighbors above or below me. I just had a business uh-huh. below me, uh-huh. and that was really ideal. Um, uh-huh. For the last year, I've lived in a new spot where I have someone above me, um, with my actual landlord is above me. And well, he- that's okay though, because above doesn't hear it well, as bad. Yeah. So here's the thing: when <laughs> I so was stupid. like I interviewing for the apartment, I was very clear about uh, being a musician and a composer, um, and I was just super upfront about it because I did yeah. not want to have the issue a lot of New Yorkers have, where they move in and then all of a sudden they can't do what he did. And yeah. and my landlord, bless his heart, is just like, oh, that's great. We love musicians. And he compliments me on like what I'm playing. And I feel a real sense of like warmth and support um, Uh for playing music. I mean, I try to not like be singing loudly at midnight. um, But um, there's a real sense of an appreciation and a love of music. So I also found out, um, you know, just a few months ago that a bass player friend of mine had actually lived in the same exact apartment for a few years. So they've yeah. had musicians here already. But again, it's that, you know, that spe- you need to have that special thing of. Yeah, um, but yeah, it actually wasn't a lame question because uh, there's a there was an answer. It was so specific. You just have to be honest. Yeah, totally. <laughs> you just exactly. have to, like, it's, be it's honest a real and not issue. accept an environment that isn't going to work for you. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah oh, totally. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And there um, are definitely times where I have to tell my partner just like, just could you stay in your room for an hour? Like, right. so I can just forget anyone is around. Right, just, right, right. Like, go into the scene yeah. of writing music and then I'll come back and. You know. It's a mad dash whenever my husband goes like to the grocery store and it's like, a mad, oh, I've got an hour of work. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, so I want to just, uh, I think we probably got over our time, but I, I wanted to ask, uh, wh- what do you need right now? What do you need from the community? What do you want from the community what, um, to help you make this piece? Oh, I wanted to ask also about visuals. I'll, I'll squish it in. Um, what, 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 are, what do aesthetics mean to you uh, uh, in, in your work? And, and how, do you, how do you work them into your work? It, or that just felt like three huge questions. I know, huge is the questions. visual and aesthetics, is that the same thing? <laughs> That's a separate question. Well, you, we can ask the aesthetics thing first. Like, what do, what do, I mean, like if somebody comes to see you and they close your eyes because that's how they listen best. Yeah. Are you like, oh, but they're not getting half the story because it's all about, or is that just, or is, is that good for you? Yeah, that's interesting. Um. I think I do. I mean, I do like that place that people go to when they close their eyes and get lost Mm -hmm. and stuff. I think that that can be harder when language and communication is involved. Right. Um, I do think there's something to seeing the lips move, even if we're Mm -hmm. not lip readers. Yeah. Um, 
I also bone seeing the word bone yeah, is a lot totally. different than <laughs> than yes. hearing it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um I also feel like um I I use it I use a term to talk about how I make work um of embodied songwriting so that sometimes I start with a physical position or a like movement um and I actually let the music come from that even the lyrical content come from that um so depending on what part of the piece though I'm sure there will be certain parts of the piece um, where the physical, uh, what's happening physically is very much influencing the music. Now, there is definitely an argument to be made that, well, you can hear all of that because it's integrated into the music. Uh -huh. um, but I do, I do love the choreographic and the moving body. And, uh -huh. um, and I definitely have many strong visual ideas for this piece so that I feel like... Um, just the album form like i want to do the live performance and not just have the album form you know uh -huh. yeah 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 are you working with designers or you, is it i am but who yeah. exactly those are is a little in flux because of covid and all of that right, stuff right. so yeah. yeah that will definitely um you know um uh solidify as time yeah goes on. and what year are you in right now i'm in my uh, second year uh -huh. So, um, I mean, part of what I mean, part of what makes here so amazing is that when the pandemic first hit, I just I mean, this piece so much for me is about not thinking about humans and what a relief that is. But when the pandemic hit, I really wanted to think about humans. I really uh, wanted to be with humans and support right. humans. And I just like couldn't really I like couldn't write the piece for a while. Oh, interesting. Um, yeah, because you would think that would be the perfect time to write the piece. But right. Right. Well, it was yeah. a great time yeah. to research. There's been amazing research that I've been able to update from what we've learned during this period. And now uh -huh. I'm definitely deep into writing it. Yeah. Um, but it was just such an emotional roller coaster when everyone was getting sick all you around I mean? me. Um, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so part of what makes here so amazing is that they commissioned these two different sound walks, Cairns and Greenwood, and then just came out with uh -huh. Meander for the um, Brooklyn Botanic Garden. So I've had this amazing time where I've put a lot of energy into these two other pieces, and now I'm coming back to really focusing on mourning um, again. Good. So it feels like less than two years because I was, you know, focusing yeah, 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 for a yeah. While. Yeah. And so do you feel like there's anything that you need if someone is watching this and they and they feel like, you know, um, obviously money is always a nice thing. But uh, like, is there is there something that you that um, you want the community to um, show up for? <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, I'm definitely very interested in um, in how people are reacting to these ideas. You know, mm -hmm. I had we had a showing um, uh, maybe a month before, um, you know, New York shut down um, and I was getting a lot of feedback from people in that first month or two about how they were thinking about the piece because these ideas were just swirling all around them. And I feel like I, I'm definitely going through a process of kind of um, I, f I feel like they were ideas that felt really strong to me. And then I was like, well, I'll make a piece. And by the end of the piece, other people will be with me because they'll be like, oh, yeah, I feel you. But then with everything that's happened this year, I feel like, oh, we're just all on the same wavelength now. Right. Um, and yeah. so it's really nice to hear um, what, you know, what is hitting for people. What are the things they're thinking about when they're thinking about the natural world? Um, what they're huh. focusing on yeah oh great yeah great yeah. um well thanks for talking to me it's been uh, a pleasure thank oh you oh my gosh you're so wonderful <laughs> likewise and hopefully we'll we'll find each other in in the same room indeed, <laughs> in the indeed. Yeah. 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 Yeah.